Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to do a video blog today on the whole subject of off-site backups. If you've been following this YouTube channel, you probably know that I'm something of a backup geek. We do exist. We can be found on uh, Reddit. There's a subreddit for backups and a subreddit for data hoarders. And backup is something I've been really interested. I got interested in um, basically because I've been using an operating system called Linux for a long time and anyone who's familiar with Linux, the evolution of the Linux operating system knows that Linux, it's kind of an honor, I would, it's lets you get under the hood of computing but it also on the flip side can be somewhat unstable. That's actually why I got into backups because I kept tinkering with uh, computers only to have all my efforts go up in smoke when you know, the operating system failed or was corrupted or the disk was corrupted. So that was my sort of reason I got into backups. But over the years, as I've been continued on the journey of a creator, starting out with uh, writing, doing a lot of writing over the years, then getting into podcasting and now finally getting into video, which has kind of been my main focus for the last year. And as you progress through those uh, medium or media, I should say, from text to audio to video, the amount of data you generate progressively increases. So I want to say something about backup um, more generally. Backup strikes people as a really boring subject and it's only really when you get into creating content on the internet that backup becomes, you sort of understand why backup matters because yeah, on the surface level, when we talk about backup concepts like the 3 to one backup rule and even this video which I'm going to title Offsite Backup uh, for uh, Practical People, you kind of like, you know, people's eyes gloss over even techies and they say, backup is just like super boring, like we know it's important, we know everyone has to do it. But when you're creating personal data, whether that's sort of uh, sentimental family videos or just videos of really significant personal memories, the data you're creating, it may be bits and bytes, but that data has a lot of sentimental, sentimental value and it's more than just, uh, you know, kilobits and megabytes and gigabytes and terabytes and petabytes. It's actually memory. So um, as since I've got into this sort of creative journey, my backup, uh, I've been thinking all the time. It's at the back of my mind. How am I backing up my data? And I've done videos on this channel about how I personally back up these YouTube videos, my backup approach. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today specifically was off-site backup because that's kind of been my weak spot and just a couple of thoughts regarding um, what a good off-site backup approach would look like, what are the key principles and again I'm calling this for practical people because I'm talking about people like me who are YouTubers or who are uh, backup photographers and backing up their work. Uh, whether it's your professional work or personal work that has a lot of value for you um, I think the backup is uh, is very important. So um, it's for those people and not the enterprise people that I'm sort of like, you know, talking to here. So with that in mind, regarding offsite backup. So the, the fundamental rule for backups is what's called the three, two, one backup rule. That means that you should have three extant copies of the data you create. So let's just take this video, right? I'm gonna finish recording this video. I'm gonna add a bit of titles to it. I'm gonna normalize the audio. And by the time it spits out of my uh, video editor, it's going to probably be a gigabyte there about, so one gig of data. Now, this video probably isn't super important to me. It's not the most uh, sort of intimate video I've recorded or the, even the hardest to produce. But nevertheless, it's something I want to back up. So in the ideal situation, if I followed the 3 to one rule, I would proceed as follows. Firstly, I'd want to have three copies of this video. There'd be the original copy uh, stored on my computer and there'd be two copies of that data. One and then, now that's three, now let's get to two. Two means that these two backup copies should be stored on different storage media. So let's say I were to store two backups on my computer, I'd say, well, I'm gonna create a second backup. That would actually not be a backup best practice because what happens if that disk fails? Now, the exact interpretation of the three to one rule I found to be somewhat vague in that you could say, well, okay, not the same media. So let's say we have different hard drives in your computer, right? Like I have, or it's very easy to have nowadays, very cheap. You have four hard drives in your computer. You're going to put your one backup copy in one hard drive and another backup copy in a second hard drive. So is that 
compliant with the two aspect of three, two, one. That's open to interpretation. I would probably say no, and my argument would be, if we're looking at backup, we're talking about disaster recovery and sort of imagining the catastrophic, let's say that computer is fried by a power surge or some other unexpected eventuality, or uh, you know, a, um, uh, just the, <laughs> the roof falls down on your house, it's not gonna matter that your two backups are stored on different physical devices. It's, it's gonna be destroyed anyway. So I would say that's not good enough. And that's why there's this one aspect. And the rule of the one aspect is that one of those copies should be off site. So in other words, backup one, and realistically, the 3 to one rule I believe is almost kind of misleading because most people don't actually, if we're, if we're talking about data that we're gonna be sort of retaining for backup or archive purposes, most people eventually delete the original data. So we're actually only talking about two backups in existence. So um, we wanna have one copy on-site and one copy off-site. Now what's the rationale for off-site backup? Uh, why do we need the second copy in the first place? The rationale for off-site backup is that we're protecting against the fact that our, our, our on-site backup could be lost for various reasons. Those could be, and again, I'm talking not about the in the enterprise setting, I'm talking about the consumer setting, YouTuber, if you want to picture a YouTuber. Uh, we're talking about stuff like um, the roof falls, you know, just whatever disaster you want to, you want to eventuate. Even if you have RAID, for some reason, the your NAS completely fails or uh, your house catches fire. Let's just say your house catches fire because that's kind of the quintessential or flooded or whatever natural disaster you want to envision so your on-site data is lost so for that reason you could say you're you're religiously backing up your video content or your audio content but if you're and you're storing it on an nas and you think well this is very sophisticated nas has what's called raid it's got different hardware uh storage devices and if one fails the disk the, the whole system will recover you might think you're very clever but you're not that clever because in the event that your home catches fire or is flooded, your NAS will be worth nothing. So that's where this requirement for an offsite backup comes. These days we hear a lot of talk about cloud backup and the thing about the cloud is a famous saying in IT that the cloud is simply, simply someone else's computer, right? And that's ultimately what we're talking about when we're talking about cloud. We're talking about some data center as provision storage and it's available um, online and they have their own uh, systems running on RAID and they pro might have their own backup strategy. A common misconception is that cloud equals backup. So when we're talking about the cloud, that's not enough. So you can't just back up to cloud because cloud is probably good enough for backup. That's kind of the, the big secret, but equally it's only one copy. So you'd actually in a proper backup approach, even if you're backing up all your videos to an AWS bucket or a Backblaze bucket, you might say, well, it's spectacularly unlikely that AWS or uh, Azure is gonna lose my data or whatever, you're gonna lock, get locked out of it, but it does happen. And that's why you have to think through a backup lens, that's one copy, you still need your on-site copy of that data, it's very important. So, coming back to this thought, um, when we talk about on-site, off-site backup, one thing that I've always thought, and this is sort of why I'm doing this blog to just get these backup thoughts out of my brain, um, cloud backup, let's say storing it in S3, in AWS S3, versus storing your backup in your friends, uh, on your friends NAS. So Synology NAS have this feature called, I don't unfortunately remember the, the name of the feature, but it's a hyper backup. Mm, it's not a hyper backup, it's something else, anyway. I didn't unfortunately write it down before recording this vlog. Synology NAS have a cool feature whereby uh, you pair up your NAS, your network attached storage device with somebody else's NAS and you move your data over the internet to their NAS so they're storing some of your data and you can store some of their data. So in other words, it's kind of a peer-to-peer -peer backup system whereby you link up with someone else's NAS and you can replicate onto the other person's uh, storage rather than a public cloud. Now my question would be, is that any worse than storing your offsite on S3? I would argue that the differences are not that significant. You could say, well, if you're storing your data in S3 or Azure or Google Drive or Dropbox, anything like that, you're storing it in a professionally managed data center. That means you're gonna have uh, advanced uh, physical access control. You're gonna have you know, climate control in where the actual physical hardware is being stored, but do you need that stuff if you're just a casual user? Probably not. Probably your friend's NAS, uh, not climate controlled, 
uh, is probably fine because you're probably not going to need or you hope you're not going to need ever to use have access to your off offline backup you hope your apartment's never going to burn down you hope your home's never going to catch fire you hope your um, you hope you don't even need the backups to begin with, never mind whether they're on-site or off-site. But if they do, if you do need them, you hope that you're going to be able to get to the on-site first because the recovery time from on-site backup storage is better typically than off-site. The RTO, uh, etc. is going to be better. So, um, regarding this whole question of off-site backup, my argument would be that if you're thinking about integrating off-site into your backup approach, the best thing to do is to integrate offsite into your backup approach. In other words, I wouldn't get hung up on whether that offsite copy is going to be the cloud, it's going to be something like a Synology replication approach. Something I wish more companies offered was um, something analogous to what AWS offers in their Snowball service, which is that they'll send out a physical truck and you hand them your data physically and then they upload it from their data center. I wish that was something that Google Drive offered or Dropbox offered so that you could fill up, let's say, a terabyte hard drive and post it or whatever you want to do or UPS it over to Google or Amazon and they'll put it up on the cloud. To the best of my knowledge right now, this service is not that developed. Um, it does exist in the sense of AWS and Backblaze offer this, but it's more like they'll send you an NAS and you can send exabytes of data. It's not really yet at the level whereby you can just post in a hard drive, or if it is, I haven't found any providers and I've actually looked at this. So the big problem with um, offsite backup, the ideal way to do offsite backup would be something like, uh, you know, Synology's NAS, their operating system's called DSM, and they have this terrific feature whereby it's called Cloud Sync, and you can basically push data as you create it off-site to a backup location, whether that's Dropbox, Drive, S3, they've covered everything basically. The problem, and I think this never gets discussed when people talk about off-site backups, the problem is people in my situation, which is I have, my internet connection is about 50, 52, okay? Uh, it's probably 82, 80 down on two megabits per second up. In other words, even though I live in Israel, I live in a pretty, um, middle-class neighborhood in the capital city it's amazing to think we don't have any access to fiber the best connection I can get is a DSL based connection it's very asymmetrical the upload speed caps out at about four megabits per second on a good day so for me and the bandwidth is minimal so for me running continuous backups actually wouldn't work because my wife could be watching Netflix and I'm pushing a backup and suddenly the, the, the whole internet's gone down so in an ideal world, cloud backup would be the, the most logical option, right? Everyone has an account on Backblaze or S3 and you can just push up your, your files to the cloud continuously. The problem that I don't see discussed is that in consumer land and the problem you always see in backup is that the whole backup world, consumers generally don't worry about backups. I'm kind of the me and the people posting on the data hoarder subreddit were the exceptions. Most people just don't think about this stuff. But it's a pity because most YouTubers, uh, everyone creating video, I would say, whether you're publishing on YouTube or distributing through some other platform, really, really should be backing up their video uh, off-site as well as on-site. And that problem I never see discussed, that internet access is not equitably distributed. Uh, if you're a uh, you know, video creator in Lagos in Nigeria um, or in Jerusalem, Israel, you may have very, very poor access to uh, good symmetrical internet. And therefore, what's practical for someone living in San Francisco who's got a symmetrical Google Fiber connection, you just can't use that backup approach. So um, in terms of off-sites that are available for people in my situation, I've looked into the, the whole spectrum of what I would call wacky approaches. I've literally considered digging holes, I'm not kidding, in the ground, marking them on Google Maps and being like, I have a terabyte of my uh, you know, encrypted video data here. But what you can do if you wanna be a bit less crazy is you know, give your hard drive to a friend, uh, store it in your car. I thought about doing that as well. People on Reddit told me that was crazy because uh, a car, um, especially in a hot part of the world like where I live, can be subjected to um, very hot degrees that may uh, degrade or accelerate your bit rot. Um, but my thought regarding offsite is that it's you know it's be it's just better to do it than not to do it. So something I've bought, and I'm sorry I'm not using any graphics in this video to make things a bit more interesting. It's just kind of from the uh, off the cuff really. Um, a, a very cheap device I'd recommend if you're interested in offsite backup is something called a HDD duplicator. So it's a hard drive duplicator. It's a basically physical hard drive bay and it's got two slots. 
you can stick it and the intended use case is actually that you don't need a computer you put in your hard drive so what i'm doing right now i'm filling up hard drives as i do these youtube videos and then i'll duplicate them so when i fill up a terabyte i will literally duplicate that terabyte and then give it to a friend that's my current backup process that's my current offsite is i literally um in exchange for beer and i'm not actually kidding this is what we're doing um i periodically and it takes me a while to fill a gigabyte probably six months at the going rate maybe even a year and i'll have a gigabyte of data i'll upload my you know i'll copy my youtube videos and i'll copy my stock footage onto this onto my nas and periodically i'll put them onto my uh, cold storage and when that fills up to one terabyte when the disk is a capacity I will replicate that disk and give it to a friend. Now you could also, if you have, if you have an office, like most people do, I work from home, but if you have an office, you could literally have a cabinet in your office with your offsite backup. You could give it to your boss, you can give it to your friend, you can give it to, it doesn't matter. So if, even if you don't have access to cloud backup, I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, you're not out of options. There's actually stuff you can do. And I, I, I'm a fervent believer in the importance of backups, especially for creatives. And that if you're doing anything, you're probably ahead of most people. So if you're just doing your offsite backups, you're probably doing more than most people are doing. Most people, YouTubers are just pushing up their video to YouTube, deleting the file, and that's it. So you, firstly, don't do that. Keep your original copies. But if you want to really do it properly, the 3 to one backup rule, it's not enough just to keep a, a copy on your NES. You should really also be uh, keeping an offsite copy. And as I said, uh, regarding how to do that, if you've got great internet, beautiful. So uh, sign up for B2 by Blackblaze. Backblaze. It's really cheap uh, object cloud storage and uh, install some kind of sync program on your NES and sync up your stuff to the cloud. Uh, so every time you dump a gigabyte on your NES that goes up to the cloud, perfect, you're great. If you don't have good internet, you can get a bit creative. You can go around digging a hole in your nearest public park and put your backup in there. I'm just kidding, probably don't do that. But find a friend who's got a, a loft or a basement and tell them I'm really into backups and if you don't trust your friend encrypt your backups and say look I want you to store discs in your house and it's just a backup for my primary storage and uh, you know I'll come to your home every month and I'll bring a six pack of beer or I'll pay you or whatever deal you want to strike and uh, do that and whatever you do it's going to be better than not doing backups so that's basically my advice or my thinking about offsite backups, uh, I do think it's something everyone should be doing. And even if you don't have good internet, there are options if you get a little bit flexible and creative about how you want to do your backups. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, next video coming soon.